Welcome to another episode of MacBreak Studio. This week we're looking at warp speed motion tips. We are. <laughs> Excellent. I thought I'd yeah. mess you up. He's like, That's no, great. I know exactly what That's, we're doing. No, sure, sure thing. Um, we're going to talk about how to do some rigging in motion. So the context is creating a title for Final Cut Pro 10 and allowing the Final Cut Pro editor to make changes to it, to modify it, to work for them. And sure. this, this will bring up rigging and, and a, a way to deal with behaviors. Because many people don't realize you can actually rig a behavior. So I want to look at how we can do that. Nice. And I'm going to start from scratch. I'm here in motion. Uh, launch motion. I'm going to select a Final Cut title. And I'm going to use the defaults, just a 1080 project here. And shift Z to fit the canvas to the window. I'm going to turn off but not delete that title background. And I'm all, I am going to delete the current text layer in there. I don't like that one. I'm just going to make my own. Hit T and I'm going to write animated text. Escape, F7 for a heads up display. I'll make it nice and big. F1 for the inspector and I'll reset the properties and I'll also uh, center it. Okay, so I just want some text on the screen. Um, and I want it to animate on. So a quick way to do that, I'm going to go right to the behaviors pop-up menu and I'm going to go down to my text basic and I'll choose this one to slide in. So if I play now, I have this text that slides nicely onto the screen. Are you pretty okay. sure that doesn't already pre-exist in the uh, Final Cut Pro titles library? Uh, it might. doesn't matter. Choose, you know, choose whatever animation okay. you want because the point here is controlling the timing of this animation. Ah, got it. So the, the animation is controlled by this behavior. And if I click on the end of it, we can see the tooltip tells us it's one second and 11 frames long. So the question become, becomes, how can the Final Cut Pro editor make this animation longer or shorter? Now, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with it longer. I'm going to drag it out to be the longest I'd want it to be. Let's say I'd want it to be at the, at the long, let's say two seconds for the time being. I'll just drag this to right to two seconds. And um, the other thing I want is in Final Cut, when you change the duration of the whole title, I want this two seconds to stay fixed. Because you make the title really long, you don't want the animation to slow down. Right. Or short, you, want it, you don't want it to speed up. And the way you do that is with a build-in marker. So I'm going to hit Shift-M for a marker, and then M again to open it, or I can just double-click on the marker. I'm going to change the marker type to a build-in optional, and click OK. okay. So what that does, if I look in the project itself, that adds this build-in option. This, these are the published parameters that will show up in Final Cut. In fact, let's just save this right now and call it slide in title. Slide in title. Everything I'm talking about applies to slide out as well or animating off the screen. And I'm going to put it in this category called testing just so we can find it easily and I'll publish it. So by doing that, if I switch to Final Cut and I go to the title inspector and I go down to testing, there's our slide in. So if I add it to my project, Shift Z, so here we have the whole title, and it animates in. We should see that build-in parameter in the inspector. Yeah, we will. So if we go to the inspector, there's the build-in. So if I turn that off, there's no more animation. Right. Okay. Uh, but that's all we can control. Now, this by default, we can see that this duration down at the bottom is 10 seconds in one frame. If I make it much shorter, that animation speed is going to be the same duration, you know, unless I go below two seconds. So if I make it much longer, it'll stay two seconds no matter what which is great. That's usually what we want. But what if you wanted the Final Cut Pro editor to be able to change that to say, you know, I want it to be one second no matter how long I make the whole title. Or I want it to be half a second. How can you do that? Another marker? Not another marker. No, no, that won't do it for you. So what I'm going to do, you could right click on it and choose open in motion, or in my case, it's already open. Here's what we're going to do. The trick here is first to start with it at the longest uh, duration you probably want. So I'm going to make it even longer. Let's say three seconds. I don't think anybody's going to want it longer than three seconds. And I'm also going to take my build-in marker and move it to the end. Because what the build-in marker does, it says, never change the timing of everything to the left. Got it. When you stretch or shrink the title in Final Cut, only change the timing to the right. Okay? So you can see this bar. That's behavior. And this little area is the spread of the animation kind of how they're spreading out. But you can see the animation takes the full duration of that bar, right? Sure. It takes all the way to three seconds to animate on. So here's the trick. I'm going to close the heads-up display and go to the Behaviors Inspector and open up the controls. So in the controls, there are a couple of things called offsets, start and end offset. I'm going to focus on end offset. Right now it's set at zero, which means allow the animation to go all the way to the end. If I drag on that slider, look what happens to that little 
uh, square inside the behavior in the timeline. Oh, see, moving I see. to the left. You're gonna publish the offset so they can control. Well, not quite. Almost. Uh -huh. I, I, that that would be the first thing to do, but we're gonna take it a little further than that. So now that I've changed the offset to 32 frames, if I play now, look, the whole animation finished by the end of this little uh, spread area at about one, just about two seconds, mm -hmm. okay? So by controlling this, if I drag it further, I can make it go really fast, okay? Mm -hmm. So you might think you could publish the end offset. But, but you can't. <laughs> no, you can, no, you can. I can right click on it and choose to publish. Right. But it might be confusing because you drag this to the right in order to make it faster. Oh, that might make sense, but what do these numbers mean? And the thing is, if you drag it all the way to the right, um, nothing happens at all. And if you drag it three quarters of the way to the right, almost nothing happens. So it's a little tricky. So what I recommend is rather than publishing this directly is to rig it to a widget. Ah, okay. widget. Because there's three tip things you can publish. Widget, widgets and, and uh, pop-ups and what was the third well, one? Well, there's three types of widgets. Yes. Yeah, there's a, there's a checkbox, there's a slider and a pop-up. You're going to do a slider. I'm going to do a slider, exactly. <laughs> and instead of, this is, I'm going to do a little advanced here. Instead of going through the process of adding a rig and adding a widget and hooking mm -hmm. things up, I'm just going to right click right on the word end offset, right on the parameter, and I'm going to choose add rig. We don't have a rig yet, so I'm going to create a new rig, and I'm going to add a new checkbox pop up, just like you said, slider. I'm going to mm -hmm. add a slider. Okay? And immediately, we get a new slider widget underneath this rig here. So I'll call this slider, I'll call it, um, uh, animation speed. Animate in speed. Ah. Because you could do the same thing for uh, out, out, but Got then it. you would take you would use the start offset instead of the end offset. So now what we can do is set specific values for this. We can say, look, when this is at zero, let's have our um, our offset at zero, but when this is at a hundred percent here, let's only move this one up as far as we need to create a nice fast animation that doesn't disappear completely. And that's pretty fast. Maybe we can go a little bit further. Okay, that's pretty darn fast. Like, that's the fastest. So now what we've done is the user will only use this slider, which by using this slider only allows the parameter itself to go up to 82 instead of 100. So we've basically changed the range over which that can be affected. Nice. And it's more, it's more useful for the, the, the user. user yeah. And we can also set... a a starting value, maybe somewhere in the middle, because three seconds is kind of slow, so I'll start it right about in the middle. I double click to add another snapshot. These little balls are called snapshots there. And for this snapshot, I'll set it down there, and let's see about how long that takes. That's still pretty slow. I'm gonna go a little faster than that. Unfortunately, as you do this, you, you lose the uh, little um, picture down here. You can no longer see that to know, but that's right about 118, so I think that's pretty good. So that'll be my default value. But the nice thing about this slider widget is that you can remap parameters to it to just the range that you want. And of course, you could add many more parameters to this as well. This is a simple right. example. So the last thing we need to do is publish this guy. So I'll right click on it and choose publish. So now if I go to the project, we have the build-in and the animation in speed. I'm gonna add one more thing. Normally I would think through other things people might want to adjust, but I love adjusting the spread. So that's, I'm gonna right click on the spread and publish that, save. Go back to Final Cut and... Um, you have to replace that. Yeah, we have to replace that. So I'll drag on top of this and choose Replace from Start. And now I have an opening animation that's pretty fast, but I've got this at animation speed. So I want to crank that way up, all the way to the top. And I get a nice fast speed, but it still animates. Yes. And then I could bring it all the way down and I should have a three second long animation speed. That is pretty cool. And then because I've included the spread, if I put the spread at zero, We'll get one letter at a time, kind of typing on. And if I increase the spread, uh, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll get a much sort of smoother animation that takes the same amount of time, but just animates in a smoother way, more letters animating at once. And of course, you could take it much further and, and have it animate the opposite direction and, and what have you. Right. Uh, but this is sort of an introduction to the idea of rigging. Creating a rig. Yeah, and that you can animate behaviors, even though you can't actually right you know, stretch them directly right. in Final Cut using the end offset or start offset to do that. Really, really nice. If, if this interests you at all, we have a great tutorial on our cycle rigging and publishing. In fact, all of our plugins were created with Motion. And uh, 
you know, if there's something you're interested in, you definitely want to check out Regain Publishing because Mark just goes into all the details, how to set up, how to set up your different wid widgets and your pop-ups and your sliders, all that stuff, so that uh, end user in Funnel Cut has a, a, a good user experience. And, and they can't mess with your design. And they can't mess with your design, <laughs> exactly. So, thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. Make sure to check us out on YouTube, Facebook, the usual places. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next week.